the chicks is thicker uh -huh. Reppin' for the team, that's the bitch in Houston sipper uh -huh. She don't want your liquor, she don't want your chipper She poppin' for a legend, that's a real massa flipper uh -huh. this, this is for la raza, yeah. this is for la raza yeah. I'm in my trap, casa whipping up the damn massa Hugo mi gente, this is Chingo Bling. Hey, we're coming to your city. Yes, it's the Latino as Fuck Tour. And we're blazing it across the country. Tenemos un show, una presentación, machín, en Monterrey, Nuevo León, el 24 de agosto. Y luego el 25 de agosto en Saltillo, México. Sas. And then we switch back to English. Portland, Oregon. What it do? <laughs> Thursday, September 5th. You know, mental gymnastics over here. And we're going back to Raleigh, North Carolina. Y'all know what's up. Good Nights Comedy Club. That is also a Thursday, September 19th. Okay, yeah. And then we hit D.C., Washington, D.C., the world-famous D.C. Improv. It's in the basement. It's hella intimate, and it will sell out fast. Wednesday, October 9th. And then we're going to head over to the North Wizzy, the Northwest, Tacoma, Washington. All my people from Seattle, y'all need to come through because I... I haven't been able to make it to Seattle. But come to Tacoma. Uh, Thursday, October 17th, nos vemos. And then, October 19th, we're back in Burke, Duke City, the 505. If y'all want to get some gambling on before the show, you can. Because we're going to be at the stage at the Santa Ana Star. You know, they be giving away cars and stuff. We're going to be giving y'all vibes and laughs. And then, last but not least, we end the tour in... San Antonio, Texas, at the LOL Comedy Club, right over there by North Star Mall. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. At the LOL, San Anto. <laughs> Countdown <laughs> City, the 210. Sorry, go ahead. No, everyone's going to be like, wow, they must have got a lot of sleep because they're way more high energy than they were hey, last man. week. Oh, my God. If you don't know, so. my baby's on her YouTube game, and she's going to give y'all sleep reviews and sleep tips and sleep hacks and the importance of sleep in top five See these sleep bags products. today? These bags, no more in one month. Just watch. No bags, yeah. The power of rest. Power of rest. Put that shit in the can. Power of rest with the same amount of stress. No, but Last night I recover. went to bed. Seriously, I've got two things pending that need to be off my, my, my list right now. One is booking our hotel, and two is booking our flight. And I'm the other one. <laughs> yeah. you, you just know, can't get rid of that one. Because when you go to bed early, sometimes other activities <laughs> sometimes don't get, you know. He also but, fell asleep, but he also fell asleep before me, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go Who's on. To what, blame else, here? what else is on your uh, to-do? Um, semantics, semantics. Yeah, so I'm excited because... Okay, so he went to bed at 9.30. What? Like a yeah. motherfucking thug. But I went to bed at 10.30 because I, I was putting Penny to sleep and I had to take a shower and so forth. But I was like, I wasn't sleepy, to be honest with you. I was wide awake because, you know, it kind of happens after you take a shower. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I am not going to get up to go watch TV. I am going to take my ass to sleep. Like, I'm going to do it. Look at my baby's headband. She looked like, <laughs> she looked like uh, Barbie and Tupac had a baby. <laughs> 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 Thug love. <laughs> I'm cutting that and putting it at the beginning of the episode. That's how it's going to open up. Out on bail for shot of jail. I'm California screaming. That is my dog, though. So, and, and Barbie is my fave. So also, you, she like, yes. Look, that's how she looks with that with the hot pink yes. bandana. These are the two of my. Seriously, I listen to Tupac when I work out. That's yeah. who I listen to. I feel like a G when yeah. I listen to Tupac. Like, I'm going to just lift every I'll weight here. I've seen her do them lap pull downs. Just, <laughs> I, I, I don't feel for out of jail. Got me point, and my dude. girlfriend. That's blah, like, blah, seriously. Das, das, das. Yeah. Damn, Doing curls. Way more so, shit, do you see how mm. amazing? Yeah, you're glowing. Oh, my God. Mm. Otherwise, look, I was telling Sol, the quality of your sleep will dictate how productive you are, how efficient you are, your, the quality time with your kids. You're not dragging ass while you're trying to, your baby's trying to play tea time with you, and you're like, fuck, I just want to lay down. Uh, Mark my words. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side of the first five minutes of the week before last week <laughs> and, the, and a side-by-side -side of this one. I promise you it's going to be hilarious. I, had, I, I literally had to tell myself, because, you know, I make a to-do, well, you saw me making the to-do mm -hmm. list last night before you left, and... Usually, I like to, before I go to bed, I'll try to knock off like two of them so that I don't have to do them in the morning. And last night, I literally said to myself, for once, it's okay that there's like six dishes in the sink. That's really what I was thinking about, number one. <laughs> That's really what I was thinking All about. Oh, just six whole dishes. The cushions on my 
on my sofa also were kind of like not where they're supposed to go. That's OCD. Also this is the house I live in. Bro. So this is oh another thing that I was thinking about. And so I was like, this is my environment. OK. And then Penny left her ball out. I know exactly what she left out. Her ball out and her tennis shoes on the floor. You're freaking out. So and all this is I was a one year old. We're talking about. <laughs> this is all I was thinking about was, oh, my God, that's left over there in my kitchen. <sighs> if I go over there, I'm going to start cleaning up. I'm going to then mop. I'm going to sweep. I'm going to swiffer or whatever. And um, hey, mind you, I was asleep. Otherwise, I would have massaged <laughs> all that stress away. <laughs> hey. But he was asleep an hour earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I said, no, I'm going to bed. Like, call it a night. Like, you've got to start going to bed. Like, you're not 25 anymore. Yeah. So I was like, I'm doing it. Like, there's no excuse. So I went to bed. The alarm goes off because we have Mickey right now. I had zero problem waking up. I got up, went and put my robe on. I got breakfast ready for Mickey. I packed her lunch. I was still lunch. in bed. She was still in, he Damn. was still in bed. Penny was knocked out still. And for the first time in one year. I mean, for the I, first but time. I got up and then took Mickey to school. Hmm. But I was like dragging ass. She, like, was like, she was like, you still tired? You got like 12 hours of sleep. Exactly. Nah. No, not 12. No, we had to. I still had to get up at what? Six, four. You got up at seven, seven bro. Seven. Okay, ten. Nine thirty from nine thirty to seven. Ten. But yeah, that's, but that's good. Penny be kicking us too. No, <laughs> he's like it wasn't solid. Anyway, sleep. I was dragging that. Penny did look. Look how knocked out he was. That Penny didn't even come to the bed last night. Mm. What? She, Penny fell asleep. I took her to her bed to her mm -hmm. crib. He had no idea Penny was no longer there. Okay. And she didn't come back into bed. How you down my subconscious? <laughs> Penny didn't come back into the bed till about 5.45 this morning. Again, has no clue that that's what time it happened. Anyway, so you were saying this morning you woke up rested. Oh. So listen. He's like, so, stop dogging on me. Tell your story. So funny thing is that like when uh, Penny was, you know, when she was about six months or so, I was like trying to find like better ways to like have a better schedule with babies and there's so many moms out there on youtube that make videos of mm. these sorts so i was like trying to find ways to like have a pattern and a routine with her or whatever not as more so like a routine for mom not so much for the baby because penny has always had one but one more for me where i had some like me time <laughs> it sounds know? like a robot testing commercial <laughs> right? so, so moms you know you got to get your me time you know when you want to curl up with a glass of wine in the book Give us some Robitussin, not the last Well, I mean, I went to bed. Uh, I woke up this morning. The alarm went off. You know, I got to s I got to sit on the couch with my cup of coffee and watch the news, which I have not been able to do in a year by myself. And shout out to that humidifier. You got the, a humidifier? We got the humidifier. Oh, room we got it going because Penny's got Penny a little was like stuffy had nose. A, yeah. allergies and runny nose and uh, waking up congested, all that crap. So one of the things we did, I think my baby got a congested baby tips, uh, hacks, and reviews coming, coming up, up on her YouTube. So Stay tuned on this pink couch. So one of the things we did, <laughs> coming soon to the pink couch, is we put the, uh, you know, the Vicks uh, liquid in the humidifier and had, had that bitch blowing. Yeah. Just hot. Like you just had Mariah Carey just breathing all night. Mariah Carey. Basically. Yeah. Mariah Carey and a dragon. <laughs> we'll mix. So, so you you sleep pretty good, and uh, your your throat, like Mickey says, she's like my throat is scratchy, it's dry this morning. So I, I guess people with allergies and congested babies, but it helped. I think it even helps to sleep better because Penny, like she said, didn't wake up until my son actually sent me a. It was so weird that you had sent me this too. It was that chili pad? Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, it's been hearing us talk, dude. Us talking about sleep. We, well, a buddy of mine just got one. Literally, and he's a listener. I of the figured podcast. you'd be the person to ask. That's why I said, <laughs> well, "Have you heard you or I've tried I've heard these? of it. Like oh, yeah. Tim Ferriss loves, promoted yeah, it. Yeah, loves it. He's he just started using it like four or five days ago, I think. And uh, it's not loud. It's and it works basically. Like you keep it by your bed, and it can be either uh, it's water cooled, so it's either cold water or hot water if you want to keep the bed warmer, keep it colder, and that's it. It's like the way you describe it is like the cool side of the pillow, but all night and throughout your body pretty cool because i love sleeping super cold and uh, it's me best. too you have to sleep he super doesn't cold. it's optimal. he's always like it's cold i'm like well it depends <sighs> well no because this is what happens sometimes in hotel rooms he's so lean my right i look, know that's what i told him i said nah, I'm do you know why you're cold i was like do you remember when fat. i was when i was competing Wait I, hit 20. I was always cold i said that's the reason why there's not enough body fat on you i said right now i'm fat so i get hot you know what i'm saying i'm <laughs> like so i'm like it's hot in our house so this is a good segue it was i know we went and got a dexa body scan follow-up so d-e-x-a 
All right, so we got our first one in April. This is right before we were going to go do... Um, this was before Chingo de Mayo, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah. Before. So we knew Chingo de Mayo was coming up. I, I was done tr- experimenting with every diet that's out there, mainly slow carb. So I said, hit the nutritionist. L- hit Christine Anderson. Get me a menu. I'm going to follow it. Um, let's go I get it. I had just decided to no longer breastfeed. So we were both oh, kind of right, on, yeah. like, ready to mm-hmm. really step it up. Um, m- you know, my way wasn't working. And then... We went and got a DEXA scan so we could have some inf- some data. Once I saw those numbers, that's what really kind of motivated me because I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, plus you're looking at this scan, too, where it, it just be highlighting, you know, every little ounce of fat on you. Mm-hmm. And um, este, so I look at the numbers and I'm like, OK, I see I'm at 26 percent body fat. I'm like, God damn, that's over a quarter. And then four months of just being consistent, working out with Sean um, and Agent Sean and then following and yeah doing the diet P- noticeable results to where people are like damn man where's the rest of you or like damn you used to be a little bit bigger right but it's still only three percent body fat but it's you know that's cool you know it's just cool to at least compare and mm-hmm. and that was that's four months so so long time. i it was takes, beating yeah, myself takes, up because i felt long. like it was just not happening quick enough but i guess like he said once you see it because for me i don't ever like i don't I'm not saying I don't like numbers. So I don't like to see it. But for me, it's like I go based on what my body looks like, what my clothes feels like. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and yeah. then I f- and then the scales, the it's last di- it, thing for me, the scales never first for the me. scale could be very, very bad because you could be losing muscle lean mass like what I was doing, mm-hmm. not knowing because it took me four months between ¿cómo se llama? Uh, Dexas. Mm-hmm. So we were able to give uh, Christine an update. Like, hey, uh, I, I lost uh, uh, seven pounds of fat, but I also lost about five pounds of lean mass. Mm. I, or, or I think which is pretty close to what he lost. <coughs> it's in too weight, close to one in yeah. one. Yeah. So anyway, she's like, oh, no, we're up in your calories. So thanks. I needed to know that. And if you're just looking at a scale, you're just thinking like, fuck, yeah, I'm dropping weight. That's why it's not all about just weight. You know, yeah. people do weight loss uh, things. Challenges. And, and they'll do Biggest like loser starvation yeah. diets. Your body, no, your body thinks it's starving. It's going to start eating up muscle and all types of shit. Same thing with juicing and those cleanse. I just like hate when people ask me, like, is there one that you recommend? And the only reason I don't like to dog them is because I know that a lot of stay at home moms or just women who are entrepreneurs sell those things, you know, to other women. Yeah. So. I also don't want to sound like I'm bashing women that that do that because that's your job and that's your hustle. And, you know, if anything, I applaud the hustle, not your product. You know what I'm saying? So or you can't solely rely on one. There's no quick fix. Yeah, there's never. And I just like I don't know how much. It's not a magic pill. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how I can wait till that video comes out that we're going to make of that. So 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 one of the important uh, pieces of data that they give you when you get a DEXA. (coughs) <coughs> is uh, the amount of visceral fat you have. So there's all kind of different types of fat, but the visceral fat is the one over your organs, like your liver. So you don't want to have like a fatty liver. You don't want to have fat over... Well, you naturally have to have some. It's just Which for protection. protection. But they tell you, you want to keep it well under a pound. You know, uh, right now, w- first I was like over, a little bit over a pound. Mm-hmm. Now I think I'm like right at a pound. Like, just shy. Like, I think I might be mm-hmm. close, to, very, very close, close to a pound. I don't have it near me. Mighty Souls right <coughs> is way l- uh, lower. I don't want to put your numbers out there. <laughs> but the lady was saying, like, well, sometimes, you know, some people are genetically predisposed to right. having, you know. I'm proud of my numbers, so you can say it. Uh, you're, you're at 0. 0.75. Five, which is lower. So here's the point I want to make. The point I want to make is this. is um, This is such an important number be- because... Like, because it can be an indicator of, for instance, you about to have to be on some medicines, Chingo, if you don't bring that number. If that number, if you just say, fuck it, and you just let that number shoot up, you guess what? Go to the doctor. They're going to put you on some of these, some of those, and some of them. And I don't want to be on none of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pills th- and shit. I know you got a lot more to talk about, uh-huh. but I want to remember this because, like, you don't know what you don't know, basically. And a lot of different Latin communities, for what, you know, for better or for worse, just don't, aren't, they're not aware. They've never been, they never got out and sought or out maybe the information. They also don't really care. For sure. But that's yeah. where it starts. That they don't care, so therefore they're not going to learn, right? My, well, one of my old employees, my old, uh, my old business accountant or slash admin person, she'll probably listen to this, uh, her husband just last week had uh, quadruple bypass Ooh. surgery. Oh. He's, okay, check this out. They're in their late 50s, active as fuck, 
super i mean mm-hmm. these people are active they pickleball all the time uh, yoga they walk the, you know they walk a lot but stress um, what is it? no it, it was literally just it's one it was a genetic thing like they not a worry in the world so they were playing a game of pickleball which is if people don't know it's like tennis but with a smaller mallet mm-hmm. bigger ball and uh all of a sudden he didn't feel good right she's telling me the story she was real freaked out she's like hey can we talk and uh he ended up having a stroke Mm-hmm. And didn't, oh. but didn't go to the doctor until like four days later because he didn't feel terrible, but it didn't get like too much better. So then he goes to his practitioner and uh, they told him like, you need to go to the ER right now. Something's not right. And then they basically like, they, they that's sh- old. That's old. Yeah. The water. That's, no, that's oh, that's oh, disgusting. Yeah. Go on. Uh, no. Yeah. So then uh, they thought it was going to be like a stint, like a quick little repair. And then when they, Took him in, found out he he had blockage on all four major uh, and never and had no sign of never anything. checked in. Not that he had they had no pre like uh, he had been checked out before, but it just presented itself basically. Oh, they don't look at that. Not really, not unless you actually go get an, what is an EKG, you know, do your heart uh, check or whatever the fuck. It was crazy because it's like they've covered all their bases. They're a- they're they're active. They mm-hmm. take care of themselves. He's actually also a vegan. He doesn't eat meat. He eats vegetables and fruits and. And then supplements with the other things that he doesn't get. So it's like he's done everything it's right. Like where's the fat coming from? That uh, well, he's just said it's genetic. So it's almost like what you're talking about, you know. Well, well, he, here's what I, here's one thing I want to be careful of. I think part of the problem of sometimes the information not being communicated well out there is sometimes people are quick to be like, "Oh, diabetes runs in my family." Mm-hmm. It's like, well, so does. The way your mama cooked, mm-hmm. <laughs> that runs in your family, because <laughs> your sister cook, you cook like that. Everybody in your family cook like that. Um, so the visceral fat thing, like, I just want to communicate it to people, like in lamest terms. Hey, 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 man, I'm gonna give you some game. Let me pull you aside. If somebody came to me and said, "Chingo, how how much is one of these scans? One hundred and fifty bucks, one hundred and seventy-five. Like yeah. I don't know. It's worth it to me. Yeah, just to know. So if I if someone came to me and said, "Chingo, man, look." I, you know, I got a little extra money. What are some tests or some things? I, what's some? What are some cool little numbers and indicators or, or something I should maybe pay attention to? I think that's one of them. If you have the luxury to go get a, a DEXA scan and they can tell you, like, bro, um, you got X amount of pounds of visceral fat. Uh, like, it's, it's like you should almost be able to walk up to someone on the street like, hey, man, what's your visceral? Same t- the same way we talk about credit score. Like, what's your visceral? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Like, what's your visceral number? Like, man, I'm at a two, bro. I'm about to get it down. Uh, hopefully, by this next checkup, I'm at 1.8. And people know what the number is and what it indicates. That way, you know, like, uh, I think they said diabetes, heart disease, like mm-hmm. several things. You can look at that one number. You can look at two totally different people and just based off that number, be like, yeah, if I had to gamble and guess who might be having to go to the doctor and um, they got to prescribe you some, some of these and some of those, <laughs> I don't want to be on none of I'm that I'm so shit. scared of that because my dad passed away. Well, he had a heart attack due to the diabetes. Mm. So I'm so scared of it. So I've always kind of like, after my dad passed away, I was like super duper like hyper alert. Mm-hmm. Like no one's business about like, you know, like I was, I was conscious of it before, but not like how Man. the way I became after my dad passed away, you know? God forbid if, uh, you know, if somebody was in that type of situation, like I would try to do everything in my power. Like, okay, how can I cure this? Like, is it possible? Can I fix it? Oh, well, I mean, it's hard. You'd have to probably, can I fix it? You'd have to change your diet. You'd probably have to change your lifestyle. And, you know, you can't, you know, be drinking Hennessy <laughs> and just being up, not resting and yeah. eating drive through all the time. And you just don't give a fuck. Well, hey, that's self-destructive. Yeah. Meanwhile, I told my so when she texted me earlier, she's like, oh, you know, I slept so well. I got up early. I'm knocking shit out. And I was like, yeah, Don's been out of town. And every day I've been up till 3 a.m. And <laughs> waking up at 630 still the same. Oh, wow. Just like I'm 21 again. Just like staying up late. Working. I know. Isn't it crazy how our body used to do that? Like I used to stay out and party and then get up for work. Like <laughs> like nothing. Like nothing. Three, like, four oh, hours what's asleep. up? Cool. Yeah. I'm going to take a shower now. Ready to go to work. <laughs> and I'm good to go. Like. And do it all over the yeah. next day, you That's know? Right. So it was crazy. Look what they put for my age. 39.9. <laughs> that means you old as fuck. 39.9. That means, it, that means how many days, boo? I'm like, it's this week. A couple week? of days. A couple yeah. of days Friday. away from the Saturday, 40. Friday. Friday's his birthday. 
Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, we're going to be 23rd. in Mexico. That's crazy. Vamos no, a baby, star, we'll be in no? Lake Tahoe on your birthday. Okay, I'm going to start in, in uh, El so, Lago Tahoe. So while we're going to Lake Tahoe, La let's talk. Let's kind of like talk yeah, about sure. that. That's kind of, it's really cool. So it's a kind of like a, it's not a, it's not UFC, but it's something, I guess UFC's competitor, right? I guess, would you say that? Yeah, so Campbell McLaren, who started Combate oh, Americas. America. Yeah, 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 so we, uh, he invited us to come out and uh, basically, you know, just kind of, Oh, We've been dope. out before. We've been out before where we went, and this time around, we're gonna go and like, you know, come watch the fights again. So we thought it was kind of cool. We're like, ah, oh, well, that's a good birthday. That's cool thing to do on yeah. your birthday. You know, we we couldn't figure out what to do for his birthday. We thought New Orleans. Then we thought, and then the opportunity to go do comedy in Monterrey came up. So we were like, oh well perfect it's for your birthday what a great thing to achieve on your 40th yeah. birthday you know yeah, for, be doing for what a goal you love. yeah and we're going international yeah that's the best so i i love the fact that he's uh and getting to do that myself. yeah going what? into a new year like pushing myself doing something that uh i never done before and yeah. then uh you had written it on your goals and in, in your journal one of your journal entries which mm -hmm. is funny we were revisiting that journal entry and he's like check this out i had wrote that i wanted to do um comedy either in monterrey or the f mm -hmm. and you know fast forward to mm -hmm. this upcoming weekend he shout will be out doing to uh shout out to uh, jesus trejo for uh connecting plug, us yeah. with salvador from out there and uh he actually did two shows like that too monterrey mm -hmm. and saltillo so i'm excited estoy muy excited <laughs> <laughs> and i was listening to my 10 minute set uh we should watch that by the yeah. way because i have a feeling that uh whoever edited that they already did like all the audio mix. It looked like we could. Uh, this is my first time, but you could damn near upload that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should damn near. Uh, I don't know because I only have ten to fifteen minutes in Spanish. Oh, that would be the material, right? That, yeah. Yes, but we're but you're about to release it anyway, so maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to release it as one of the clips uh, in yeah, the, eventually, in the series yeah, that yeah. we cool. that you begin. Yeah, we'll see. That's funny. I can't wait to like expand the spanish set and polish it and get it super up to par where it's like if someone picks up the phone <clears throat> and they're like hey um in mexico city we want to we want to do a, a three like in the region mm -hmm. like a three city run you know but you got to do 45 mm -hmm. or something like that i want to be able to be like yeah yeah i actually have an hour and 15 but mm -hmm. yeah i'll knock off 30 yeah. for you well how about this i was thinking i don't know if we've talked about this in the past but repurposing like for instance this material or even the last specials material all in spanish and oh, oh that's again. literally i mean that's li um some of the stuff uh doesn't really translate yeah like there's a tag that, that has to do with abraham lincoln mm. In Mexico, can ching us. I'd have to like set it up or explain it. Like, ah, ya en el otro lado hay un güey que era presidente y lo pusieron la moneda del, you know. And then it would give away the punchline. That's a funny. Uh, I was almost <laughs> gonna give away the punchline. It's so funny. Yeah. So so anyway, my point is, there's certain words like midwife yeah. that it's like ah, it's partera, and mm -hmm. it, it loses that wordplay mm -hmm. joke. You know, little things like that. But Marisol and I are gonna sit down and uh, make it do what it do. And um, I love doing the Theo Juve reacts videos because. That gives me, me a chance to go into this other Dude. world persona. For sure. Dude, I, I'm, I'm not even blowing smoke up your ass, both of y'all. But like just doing those videos, it's so funny because I'm here behind the scenes for both the videos. And it's cool to just have more content on y'all stuff going out. But the Theo Hoovy reacts stuff, and I see it in the comments immediately, like how much people are loving it. And I'll record it, and then I'll go edit it, and I'll put polish it all together, and then I'll upload it. And then I'll still rewatch it and laugh the same amount as when <laughs> I, we first did it. Oh, but that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I like I like riffing and freestyling, improvising. I even laugh. Yeah, I'm like I I laugh at my at at that at those because I forget the stupid shit that I say. <laughs> so when I watched it today, when I uploaded uh, the one about the cholo fight, yeah, there was something he said. Um, Oh, what is uh, este way tiene vans? No, yo me estacioné acá por el JC Pen y todavía por el pinche dealer or something like yeah. they're fighting over a. Uh, a you know parking space or something uh, and then something about este wey es camaradas con Dana White wey you know pensabas que era nomás tú no eres cholo wey tú eres MMA wey tú eres otra cosa no, nosotros oh, somos cholos oh my god <laughs> and then at the end he's like basically in like el hocico wey ese wey se arranca en veces <laughs> and it gets you into yeah. the ego man so oh so but, uh, stupidly funny so hopefully me doing more and more of those and being in character it'll mm. help loosen up you know uh my vocabulary in Spanish, mm -hmm. y que más? Uh, 
and probably get material. Like that could be a bit in Spanish, yeah. which is about like most of las peleas de cholos in YouTube, mm -hmm. and then all the fucking tags. But en veces, you know, en veces no son cholos, way, you know, or you know, whatever ends up what we sift through mm -hmm. and see what the little nuggets. Oh, are. that reminds me. I'm gonna put it in my notes. I had another high thought the other day for uh, for what? What you mean high thought? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who who are you smoking with, Rob? What's going on? Just by myself. What? Oh, you one of them little pins, right? <laughs> yeah. Who are you smoking with, Rob? <laughs> you yeah. getting ideas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put it in my notes because uh, it's a good one. Oh, order. you vaping. You ain't. Well, yeah, man. You got to do the flower too, brother. Yeah, you know. It's not as convenient. Which do you prefer, babe? I, I get, I get, I feel good. I get my medicine. I get my dose. I prefer it through flower. Hmm. That's how, I, at the moment. Only because... You can't compare the potency of it, honestly, I don't think, but I still prefer it's, it. And it's a different... I mean, it's convenient as fuck. Yeah, for sure. And it could become pretty habitual because then it's like, now you're just hitting it every time you get out the car because <laughs> it's in your pocket. <laughs> it's in your pocket and it was no lighter involved and, and there's no smoke. So now you just fucking high all the time versus, okay, uh, you know, just had my coffee, you know, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I still feel a little tired. This will give me a little pick me up. Yeah. So I go do these errands. Yeah. Uh, I don't know really what I feel about either or, but I just, I don't function with that stuff during the day anyway. I'm nah, garbage. I, I can't. can't. He functions well. Depends. Levels. Depends. Levels. Levels. Exactly. Levels to it. I can't function. Well, for me, it's because I, I'll be a nervous wreck. Sometimes I'll just be anxious as fuck or I'll just get in my own head. I would like live in my head if I don't, you know what I'm saying? If I don't like snap yeah. out and be like, you know, hey, what's dude. funny is uh, yesterday at Tip Tuesday, mm -hmm. someone said, is Chingo Chingo at home? I'm assuming they meant like, is he a some, funny, yeah. you know, out there Mullet. person that, you know, <laughs> that he's. Does on. he wear the money yeah. for fun around the house? <laughs> well. <laughs> hey, after no, hours. <laughs> That's the next podcast, Chingo Wait, oh. After Dark. Wait, Chingo hey, after dark. hey, tune it in. Um, on the pink couch. Talking in the viejas. On the pink couch. <laughs> talking in the viejas. Call us with your sexual concerns. Oh my God. That's what my tip Tuesday should be tips. called. Tips on the pink couch. Hey, Ooh, we tips should do, on the pink. You remember that famous painting of George <laughs> Costanza on the couch? Uh, where he's in his underwear? Famous to Seinfeld fans. Yes, to Seinfeld fans. Okay, I think I, I know what you're Seinfeld, talking about. I think yeah. I know yes. what you're talking about. We need, to, we need to do that at Theo Hoover on that pink couch, uh, posing like George Costanza. That would be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. My pink couch is player, though. Yeah. It really is. Uh, for listeners that don't know, um, this couch is amazing. It's on my soul's Instagram. And also, she had it on the ground because she uh, didn't, couldn't find the legs until the next day. Well, that's what happens whenever they send you stuff that's made in China. Which a like lot of everything stuff in this room. Yeah. Which a lot of stuff is. <laughs> well, they're, you know, they are very savvy. So there's a zipper underneath the, the couch, couch which I had it. no idea. Yeah. And that's where the legs were hiding. Because we were like, it's so weird that this couch sits so <laughs> low. Why would it sit this low? You know that I think furniture is like the number one thing that uh, fills up the most of those shipping containers mm -hmm. from China. Mm. Oh, makes sense. Something like that, mm. furniture. Yeah. There's also crazy markup on furniture and mattresses. It's crazy when you look into how much it costs them to produce a mattress, for instance. That's why all these companies like Casper and, you know, the Purple Mattress and stuff, you can they sell them so cheap because, like, the secret's out. It doesn't, you shouldn't have to pay $5,000 for a mattress, you know, or... So they're like, that's the Oh, my God, disrupting? who pays $5,000 for a mattress, Oh, bro. a lot and, of people. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, most... $5,000? Everyone you can buy a cash car with $5,000. That's $5, the $5. same thing I say every time. Well, think about how much new research there is on sleep, right? The science of sleep to where that was the science at first. We're going to sell you an overpriced mattress because your back hurts and you're tired and you're not getting good rest. Well, you if, if a chili pad existed back then right. and the humidifier or whatever the fuck. I'm going to let my back it, hurt for $5,000. If, <laughs> hey, if weed was legal back then. Yeah. Or more people smoke, they probably been like, man, it's not the mattress, bro. It's you stressing. Yeah. You staying up too late. You staring at screens. You too much caffeine. And I, uh, I do think there is certain mattresses that are shittier than others. Oh, I will sure. say that because when we stayed at the Airbnb in L.A., I kept complaining about my back hurting. I mm. said, I have no idea what this is. I was like, my back is hurting. I thought it was because I carry Penny on my on a sling, you know, mm -hmm. on my rebozo. So I thought that had to do with it. But I was like, I do it all the time. So 
why yeah. all of a sudden i was like okay is it because i'm doing it more often that I was really that didn't wayfair know. stuff that's mm. what it, i think it was a little wayfair so i know i think that's more of an ikea couch mm. i mean like ikea so mattress. the way you used to always pitch it the, the marketing would always be like they would calculate the amount of time you spend in your bed and that's how they would sell people on like you spend x amount yeah. of your life in bed you yeah, know you do it's an five thousand is nothing yeah it's not yeah. an it's not a what do they call it? it's not a purchase it's an investment and back then your, yeah know? back then i'm sure like Many studies have linked sleep to oh, everything. this, this, and that. So well, yeah, it's it the mattress. Cause heart yeah. disease, yeah. lack of sleep. Yeah, it leads to a lot of problems. Uh, it can. But anyhow, the whole point of that was that some of these mattresses, because I've known some people that work in the industry that cost thousands of dollars, are literally like two, three hundred dollar mattresses. I'm curious though about that. Uh, the Casper and them business, like they wanted to disrupt, right? Mm-hmm. They were disruptive, mm-hmm. and so for, for instance, this project that we were. Um, that we're going to be editing and releasing soon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Podcast listeners, it's coming soon. <laughs> it's the, uh, focus. Oh, let's think of ways of how we could break the rules, bend the rules, and be disruptive. Oh, like, for sure. Like, okay, they did it like this and this. Okay, we're going to do it like this. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like Tyler, the creator, you it had has something coming morning. out. It was filmed on a phone. Yeah, on the iPhone. I love it, yeah. I love the idea of the I iPhone. I mean, my thing's already filmed, it, but... but well, still, I mean, even when the, uh, not the XS, but I guess I think it was the 10, the X, the original X came out. Somebody had done like a full length movie on three iPhones, you know, and they shot oh, it, edited wow. it on. <clears throat> what if, what? what if could, okay, hypothetically speaking, you come to DC and I, what would you need to be able to film that? With, Another with phone? Because it'd be take the memory off his phone. Yeah, right. Just, yeah, enough space to record however many sets. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I heard another phone, but what if, what if it was three angle or two? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You would just so three just, phones. Yeah, just place so them the way you had. So camera. basically, go buy a couple phones. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? And that, like, I couldn't use my phone. No, for sure. But well, yeah, so maybe it'd be your phone, your phone, and my phone. Yeah, we could literally set our phones up like that and then just record it. Your phone. You, which one's yours? The XS. Okay. Yeah, the same one we you have. got. Yeah. Okay. Because man, sometimes the clips that you. Uh, mm-hmm. Give us. Um, well, you remember you got to change your settings yeah. too. So you, we have oh. settings to be able to mm-hmm. uh, record. Because you can shoot it in four K. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we put a pin in that idea? Sure. It's just an idea, you know, because yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to look at my footage, so <laughs> I don't even know what I'm working with. Yeah. 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 But uh, it's but me speaking nuts. of the footage, yeah, sold out shows in Addison, Texas. Thank you for bringing it back. Yeah. Let's go back even yeah. further, Houston, because H Town. Yeah. yeah. Uh, seven shows. Seven shows. We we did fourteen shows. In uh, two weeks, which is which is cool on many, many levels for many, many reasons. Um, Number one, I can't wait to do nine shows in Dallas or 11 shows in San Jose. Yeah. You know, 14 shows in Denver, you know, uh, 16 shows in Phoenix. You know, God willing, just with the shit, the love and support of people that listen and tune in and Mm -hmm. watch and subscribe. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we did seven. If we would have added a. Two shows on a Thursday, um, that would have been nine. Oh, yeah, so on and Thursday, so forth. Right? No Thursday. No, we ended up adding a, a show of the late uh, for a late show on Saturday, which was a eleven thirty show, and then we did a matinee show on Sunday. Like um, like Fluffy, I don't know if Fluffy's done this in a while, but like Angela Johnson, not sure if she still does this, but there's a there's a handful of comedians that be doing like sixteen shows. Like Kevin Hart before he started doing arenas and theaters and all that shit, stadiums. <laughs> um, well, they were talking about uh, Joe. Co- was it Joe? Yeah, Joe Coy's got the record at Brea. Sold out sixteen shows. What? I think it was sixteen. Really? All yeah. sold out. Yeah, Brea Improv. The new, I wonder if it's the new. The new one. Brea. Yeah. Oh, it's a. It's that's so a pretty. big. That's a nice. That's a nice. And they wanted him to do twenty uh, this next go round or something. And he's like, I, I don't have the time. It's not. It's a, but I think he's going to still do sixteen again. Joe Coy's a beast. I saw him live. He's great, great in man. California. I've never I seen him I love his videos um, on uh, Instagram. You know, they're yeah. just hilarious. I, I, he made me laugh. When he gets bro. his mom on there, it's yeah. so it's even funny. Or his son. He does some shit with his son sometimes. Or his nephew, I think it might be. He made me laugh. I was like a spectator. I, I you know, had, I was like, I actually had the alcohol in the drink. I wasn't just there. This is before stand-up. Oh. So I was just fucking laughing. I didn't, I didn't overthink like the parts where he was thinking or what he would like take, it felt like a minute, Mm -hmm. but he's just kind of like, huh. Question. Was it, was it because you didn't analyze it because you didn't really know? I I know you weren't Mm -hmm. doing stand up, but that's besides the point. Mm -hmm. My point is like now that you know how to write Mm -hmm. 
stand up is do you think that the reason why you didn't analyze it was because you didn't really know how to write stand up? Yeah, well, more so perform stand up, mm. anything about stand up, only because like he went off on a tangent, just started doing like 90s R&B karaoke. He just did a whole thing with his DJ where there was like, remember this, though, when you were, you know, you had the brand new Z Cavarici with the, oh, oh, guys, come on. Uh, and he'd fucking hit it. And he'd, my, my, telling me no. Yeah. Or some shit. And all the Filipinos in the crowd were fucking going crazy. Yeah. And then he would bring it back. And then he went on. And now looking back, it's like, oh, that last 15 was maybe f- new mixed with filler. But then there's that intermission. And Have you seen his special? The new one? I think so, yeah. Uh, you know how like he, he shot it himself? The Hawaii yeah. one? Or which one? I don't know what it's called, but it just came out maybe like a month or so or ago. Seattle, live from Seattle. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Okay. But one of the newest one is he shot it, produced it all himself, and then sold it to Netflix. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that was the one before this one because they turned him down. Mm. And so he went and just produced it on his own. And then uh, they had to end up buying it anyway. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. But Possibilities. Uh, Shout out to Houston seven, and Addison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> seven sold out shows in Houston. It was seven. a marathon. It was great. It was a lot of work, especially Houston was a lot of work because uh, normally when we're out in a city, let's say we're in Washington, D.C., so we're at the hotel room. You know, the routine might be like, Get up, breakfast, coffee, maybe like start doing some little office work, looking over your notes, watching tapes, stuff like that. Maybe hit the gym, grab some lunch, and then just chill a little bit because until showtime. Well, at home, it's like, okay, we have Mickey, let's take her to Target. We got to do some last minute little things for school. Uh, Penny, you know, let's make sure we get quality time with her. Let's take her to play. Mickey likes it there anyway. <laughs> yeah, Mickey uh, likes going there. It's you know, so we'll funny. go have like a little family lunch. Then it's come home, and then it's like eventually the uh, babysitter will show up while we, you know, have to head out to the to the improv. But it was just like, okay, babysitter's on her way. Ah, uh, my soul's getting ready. I'm starting to freak out. Yeah. I'm like, why am I still not dressed yet? And I have three shows tonight. And it's like, you know, I better jump in the other shower. And now Penny's crying. My soul comes out. She's like, Pete, thought you were watching her. <laughs> and long story short. We were 45 minutes early than usual. So technically, we were actually an hour early. I love being in the midst of it sometimes just because, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like we make a joke, like when David's around, like when m- mom and dad are arguing kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Midnight says that too about us. He's like, man. Well, so it's usually like work-related. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, we never Bickering, have like right. no, uh, no, totally. us issues like ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Um, and we don't really like I can't even say we have issues. I mean, we're not perfect. So don't think like, oh, you know, we're not we're not perfect. But <laughs> yeah, like a minute ago, she was like, that ain't got nothing to do <laughs> with what I was just telling you. It's just a lot of those little <laughs> ones. You know, it's just like a little like a little a little pump fake and just kind of makes you flinch. What, that, what, what were we talking about? Because <laughs> I was like, that was before I did stand up. She was like, beside the point. Wait a minute. Let me f- you interrupted me. <laughs> you interrupted me a little boy. If I reach across this table <laughs> and bah, jab the hat off you, hit that wind like Bruce Lee. Ta-ta's. Anyway. But yeah, so usually it's about work because I'm a, I handle things a lot more on a calm level. Mm. And so I'm already analyzing it and I've already kind yeah, of figured I, I out. Sometimes freak out. And so he'll freak out versus I'm like, Hold on. It's it's not that serious. We still because my my thing was let me since I take longer, let me jump in before you. Let me get ready. Hurry up and get ready. Why? Because I wanted to give him again. We got to the show basically almost two hours early. Okay, so my idea was you take care of Penny and hang out with Mickey. Let me hurry up and get ready so that you can take your time getting ready, meaning getting your thoughts right, getting your mind right, hitting taking that your weed. hitting that yeah, taking your time in the shower. Instead, he's like hurrying up, taking a shower. I'm like, what's what happened here? I had already well, explained in my, in this my mind plan is, to him. My, I forgot, sorry. In my mind, this is like counseling and shit, right? Yeah. Rob's yeah. the media. That's what it is. That's it what started it is. like, ooh, the AC is off and everything. Yeah. <laughs> in right? my mind, it's like, well, shit, I am the one performing. Maybe I should be getting ready at some point. Yeah. Because right now I'm just freaking out with two kids. <laughs> Babysitter ain't here. And I hear motherfucking Aaliyah playing and shit loud as hell. <laughs> for the rest of the playing Aaliyah? Oh. <laughs> like jamming out some 90s R&B Joe, Joe Coy shit. <laughs> but anyway, 
uh, those are some of the challenges that come with performing at home. And then everybody and their mom hits you up for tickets. Like, people you ain't talked to in a while, mm -hmm. like your dad. Mijo, yeah. uh, you know, there's little stuff like that. P everybody wants a guest spot. There's just things that happen mm -hmm. when you're at home. So it's like, no offense, but I ain't, you know, it's like, I, I'm in the green room. I'm about to go on. Mm -hmm. And this is just bad timing. Yeah. I can't answer everything at once. Um, but besides that, Shit, uh, shout out to Mike. Uh, he's on Instagram, fat boy to DC. And I think he's going to change his Instagram soon. But man, he came to the room in uh, Addison and recalibrated. We have it on our Instagram. Shoulders and. Ca -ca -ca. Oh, yeah, yeah. I meant to ask you about that. <sighs> I swear to you, it you hurts so sweating. bad. I told Pete I'd rather give birth again. <laughs> I'd rather give birth because it, at least the contractions come in and out. Was right? that the first time you had done that? That's the first time for me. Have you? No. Uh, the no, closest thing was like Lalo. My lady. Well, mine was uh, when, when I went to Susie. Okay, Susie. Yeah, she gave me a little tune up as well. Mm -hmm. I've never done chiropractor. I've done like Thai massage where they, you know, stretch you out, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard with chiropractors, you really need to like find a Be legit careful. one that's because scary. they're like not mm -hmm. no, as no great. Disrespect no disrespect to, to somebody that, yeah, but I've heard, I've heard some crazy stories <laughs> about mm -hmm. people like getting end up worse than mm -hmm. what they were when they went in. Yeah, some people have died. There was that famous model that went to a chiropractor and broke a bone in her neck or something and she ended up dying. Well, you got to think that part of your brain that hangs down into your spine that's still your brain the cerebral cortex I, I forget what exactly that shit does <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it does what memories uh, uh, that's another that thing was hilarious yeah in the uh, mm. um i don't think my soul's i uh, had a chance to check you it gotta out. watch it it's but uh i digress when he body slammed he's like yeah he's he forgot the day that they jumped him into the barrio he forgot <laughs> but what you birthday. did man is that like you stopped and he looked down he just kind of like that's a photo of memoria <laughs> 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 Cracked his head. Anyway, uh, exactly. Uh, it's still relevant to yeah. what we're saying. That's, that man got slammed into the parking lot. Your cerebral cortex. So these chiropractors, they... they also, it's not good to get your stuff, like, popped either. Like, because we have... So the little, uh, like, cartilage. the ligaments and stuff, we have little liquid, like, that is there, that lives there, that yeah. helps your joints kind of move. So Almost like gas, oil, yeah, you know? The, the gas bubbles are what you, the pop, make the pop noise. Yeah, and so, like, you need that little... Gas bubble? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, your bones aren't actually popping when you do that. It's it's uh, I forgot what it is, but what spinal fluid maybe of some sort. But well, yeah, that's it. exactly you need it. Yeah. You need that spinal fluid. And the more you go to a chiropractor to get like get these things done, you lessen that amount, mm -hmm. and then that's when you have issues with you know bones and stuff like that. So anatomy is yeah. fucking. F it's fascinating if you just it's take some crazy. time to look into it. Y'all heard about the Amazon burning up? Amazon, the Amazon. What? Uh, um. A lot of celebrities are posting about it, but I took a little screenshot. I could read it. Um, it's burning this, up. Well, what a non sequitur, by the way. <laughs> you guys heard of Amazon? Well, this up? is where my mind went. This is how my mind went. Uh, let me pull it up. Okay, there. My mind went to this. <clears throat> We're delicate beings. We're humans. You have spinal fluid. Uh, you got to be careful getting your neck cracked. You know, all your fucking memories are hanging from that little piece of thread behind your fucking noggin. And we're delicate and we're humans and, you know, we're, we're finite. You know, we're not infinite. And we're having to deal with these hot ass months and the fucking environment and climate change and, um, you know, the science. But anyway. Oh, Brazil's Amazon rainforest is burning at a record rate. Yeah. So check this out. Um this guy, this dude right here, uh, what's his name on Instagram? Fuck. He's the, he's the young uh, uh, program, computer programmer kid that came up with Nipsey Hussle. Oh, uh, I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look him up right now because the screenshot didn't get that part. Anyway, he says, uh, when our intervention with nature causes it to forcefully react as a result of what we have done to it, rather than operating within its flow, we cannot define the events of what happens as natural. Then it says, uh, this qualifies as a global emergency, yet most people aren't aware of what's happening in the Amazon, so here are the facts. There have been 72,843 fires in Brazil this year. Fire Damn. frequency has increased by 82% in the last seven years. This is the 16th day this particular fire has been going, uh, burning. The Amazon contributes to 20% of the globe's oxygen. This isn't just a Brazil issue, it's a global issue. As such, we cannot expect only Brazil to handle this. We must all handle this. We must do so through awareness, action, and dialogue creation. Uh, the effects of this affect our entire planet. 
and it says like everybody should be posting something about this in their own way mm. blah 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 um, so yeah there is no global warming though. bad news <laughs> it's just a lot of fucking bad news but yeah there's like the coral reefs are bleaching and yeah um well yeah remember when we went to uh where, where were we were there like don't touch them the glaciers are melting yeah and then think and then and then i look at it like haves versus have nots because if you think about you know a lot of this shit that's going on it's literally like well hey th- there's these big corporations that are greedy and they want to make some more money so a lot of times they're the ones chopping down the uh the uh rainforest or whatever to make fucking paper or whatever but then two nosotros no llenamos like we're like nah we like to dispose of shit and i don't know where it goes after i take it out in the H-E-B trash bag. Well, this is so random, right? Or not sight, random, but They work. pick it up, yeah. and then that's it. Yeah. We buy more shit. Like, our little family fucking, I don't know how much, how much fucking trash because oh, everything know. comes packaged somehow, mm-hmm. somewhere. In plastic, right? We've talked about this. Well, you know, tampons are made out of plastic, right? And there's so many that go into the water Oof. and, you know, all that stuff. And so... Uh, my friend Rania, who's we we talk a lot about global warming and that's who you know we exchange a lot of info on like oh i found these pouches for the kids you know and they're earth yeah. friendly and you know blah 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 anyway she had sent me this thing about tampons and now someone came out with like basically a hemp friendly <laughs> a friendly biodegradable pond. yeah exactly Bio uh pond. tampon and I told her, I said, one, my first thought was like, why is that guy holding the tampon in the first place? He has a whole, a, a whole handful. And she's like, Ryan's like, okay, let's look at the bigger picture. <laughs> that was your first. Yeah. <laughs> that was my That's first. That's the hood person in Mighty Soul. The, like, I was like, I'm going to look at the bullshit first. Ooh, I was like, why is we he noticed, holding all them tampons, though, the to advertise about his new tampons, you know? Yeah. So I was like, gross. But. Yeah, you've never really even thought about it. I mean, diapers, for example. Where, does, mm. where do they go? Where do they, they end don't, up? They don't, they're not biodegradable. No. Nope. I, I pulled this up because I remember reading it a little while back. But uh, in 2016, the BBC had done something about the life expectancy of Earth. <laughs> and it, it was 72 years in 2016. So less than 100 years is well, what they, they said. Speculate. Well, check this out. I don't know if we talked about this already on the uh, podcast. But in the government, there's a uh, requirement for the scientists to publish a... Um, this study of climate and environment and sciences, right? Well, um, all the bad shit is is 2050, the year 2050. That's when shit gets like really, really bad. And they're trying to warn people, right? 2040, it's going to be pretty bad. So with, with this administration or whoever is, you know, they're already getting a head start on the next one that's going to come out. I got this info from the Daily, okay. which is probably which biased, is a really interesting, which is probably a little bit biased. It, m- it might be, but it makes total yeah. sense. So yeah. g- go ahead and tell it, but it so makes sense. Basically, they're like, hey, uh, we're we st- they're required by law to publish this uh, scientific report. So the way they're trying to finagle it is they're like, hey, we're not going to include the stuff about 2050. Don't put that part in there. We're just going to our report is going to end with with these 2040 projections. Like we're going to omit. Mm. The really, really scary stuff. Mm. So that shit is like public record. Um, they also posted it on like uh, after Black Friday. Black Friday. On Black Friday. Uh, so that people wouldn't so care the to news read cycle, it. Yeah. So the news cycle. So the news cycle. It would kind of get buried or whatever. But it, it was so alarming, the shit that it was saying, that it still made it into the news. People were like, hey, did y'all hear about this thing that came out two yeah. weeks ago? It says, uh, basically it said like, it, we need to start making, um, start shifting from fossil fuels to other types of renewable sources like i don't know wind and water and like Mm -hmm. some elon musk shit but this is how it comes back to the haves and the have nots ready if they're trying to do away with fossil fuels and they're saying hey we need to get off of fossil fuels who might be upset the fossil Mm -hmm. fuel industry a lot of big so they're gonna put lobbying dollars they're gonna tell all the workers hey this is just the fucking democrats trying to make sure that midland and odessa don't got no more work and if you work in the fields and i mean uh the pipelines and you you out there in new mexico doing the pipeline they're they're trying to take away your job and if you know it's like a has versus have not so yeah, and that argument is always when they talk about that. The pe- the reason the, that big the old people in oil and gas and the coal mining and all that they don't give a fuck because they d- I don't think they think it's gonna last another hundred years. They're like I'm just gonna ride this bitch mm. out, have all the money, have everything. You're I You talking need. about the tycoons, like yeah. the owners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And what's crazy is, uh, so 100 years ago today, 1919, so the difference of what life was like 100 years ago, 100 years ago, in 1919, Americans were driving their Model Ts to silent movies and dealt with new inventions such as the toaster and zippers. Oh, wow. 100 years ago. That's not that long ago. That is not that That yeah. is my, like our grandparents for the And guess part. what it's going to look like 50 years from now. Not what you Pretty think. Pretty scientific. And I, I think, honestly, I think the rich motherfuckers are, I just have a plan on bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that movie with uh, what's his name, Matt Damon, and uh, then I think Diego Luna, one of them, is in it. Uh, what job, where, baby? where basically they left all the poor people, the have-nots, on Earth. They go to Mars, and they just have like a Beverly Hills. Yeah. Like I think it's like, uh, is it Mars? That's really what Elon Musk did. He sent the car no, out it, there to. It's got to a, his I house. think I think Jodie Foster's like the bad guy. She's the main bad person, like a Hillary Clinton mm. lookalike. But, oh um, wait, 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 wait! It's called like. Uh, not I do eucalypta, that. Euphor- that? not euphoria, eucalypta. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's got like a, uh, e- Ethesia, Ethesia, or some What's type some? of uh, mm. just put Matt Damon, um, uh, Ethiopia, uh, Diego, Diego Luna, one of those motherfuckers, isn't it? <laughs> Matt Damon, uh, Earth movie, like escaping <laughs> Earth, Earth movie, <laughs> Earth movie, like escaping uh, Earth. Uh, uh, I'm gonna look it up. So it's like immigrants. It has that whole parallel. It's that symbolism. Like basically, uh, the dude's a coyote. Uh, the guy from uh, Itu Mama Tambien is a is Gael. a coyote. Uh, I don't know if it's Gael or the other one. I think it's Diego Luna. Uh. It's, it's Diego Luna. He's a coyote, and he helps people take these spaceships and uh, go out to that new place. What is it called? I, I don't think it's on. Uh, I Matt mean, Damon's in it. <laughs> I, Matt Damon. It's not Matt Damon movies. Uh, you sure sorry, it's Matt babe. Damon, babe? Yeah, Matt Damon's the guy that. How old was this movie? Sorry, guys. They're, he's in they're a go- lot of fucking They're movies. going he's down the time. research rabbit uh, hole put, put, that put Chingo Matt talks da- about put, all the time. Put Matt, sorry, baby. Put Matt Damon and Diego Luna. Sorry, just so we know the name of the movie. No, for sure. I want to know now because I want to watch um, it. Anyway, that's one of my theories. Like, I think they're going to, uh, on Miguel's post, Miguel. Elysium. Elysium. Damn, how did that not pop up? It wasn't on his list of movies. Yeah, can, he has so many. He does have a shit ton of movies. That's crazy. I forgot. Uh, I need to watch that. I don't think I've yeah, seen that. Let we, me see we, what, the, can I see, can we you? Should watch yeah. it. I want to see what the, I'll bring up the, uh, what do you call it? The cover it literally, looks it, like. It looks like him as like a futuristic, like space soldier. He's basically like Bancho Villa. Uh, He's like white boy Bancho yeah, Villa. Yeah, Because he has to escape the hood and sneak into the, the good part uh, across the border, basically. Oh, I've never seen no, that. No, that looks like when a good When did that movie. come out? For real. Let's years see. Back. Uh, at least. Uh, uh, 13? So, 13? So don't be surprised if these motherfuckers start selling you oxygen. Is what I'm trying to tell well, you. They do. They do. Remember we Bottle were watching Bottle fucking water. Babe, remember we were watching uh Two Chains? Yeah. Where oh, he oh. went and he bought Yeah, but that shit was, was gimmicky that? though. It was How real much gimmicky. was that bottle of, of, of oxygen, babe? It was like a thousand bucks, but we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Air got to get way bad. Yo, you know what's a great show? Because you always talk about that two change. Have you seen a T Pain show? School of Business. Mm-mm. Yo, where do you T Pain on YouTube? He's got a show produced by Fuse okay. called T Pain School of Business. You're welcome, everybody listening. Okay. Wow. Well, he also talked about how he had no money. Remember, baby, we were watching well, him. That's why I went through the rabbit hole because uh, he was in the Breakfast Club. Yeah, that's what I watched. Yo, I went. I watched like how he's got do like you two lose or three seasons. that much money? That's crazy. You right? buy Bugattis and <laughs> yeah. shit yeah. like that. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, actually, I pulled it up here. So, so basically, he's a big. He's big on business. He goes, "You might know me as a musician, as a as a whatever, but I'm a businessman." And all he does is go go out it's basically like like shark tank but in the actual businesses and like uncovers people that are doing the cool shit like the first company to do a an all-electric semi-truck no one's ever talked about them but they're out there and they're actually got a partnership with ups to make all of ups trucks fully electric to cut back on the carbon emissions and all that mm. crazy crazy shit that I've and seen isn't it amazing that for whatever reason that hasn't happened yet uh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Well, it's like what we're talking about. There's a lot of people that are like, now nah, we're going to put the kibosh on that. Haves and have not. So when when air costs $1,000 a bottle, who's going to be able to breathe? The haves, motherfucker. For sure. 100%. <laughs> His, Ooh, I'm uh, start capturing some little oxygen in bottles now. Episode okay. two: How to be a disruptor <laughs> is the title of that. Mm. That episode. But you know what's funny though? Not not saying he's contradicting himself, but mm. on the Breakfast Club, he said, "Oh, a bunch of bad investments. Yeah. Oh, bad investments." He's done a lot of bad investments. Yeah, yeah. so that's probably what he talks about, and that's, that's that's probably where he has the knowledge to be able to give others. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because he failed and did all the bad things it's himself. Kind of, yeah. It sounded like bad spending. 
Bad spending, Two. yeah. But and like, bad investing. Dude. Yeah, having a lot of bad advisors, I would say. Like all the you know real estate you know we talked about. Well, you know what's funny is I that... I met the, his management people. Oh, go shit. On. Uh, okay. Go on. I'm a, no, and I'm saying, in, in, in also, also, whoever his management was, he, they should have said, bro, you can't afford... Just like... Just like I'm going to give you an example. I, I obviously am the person that con- that finance that we, mm-hmm. you know, I handle the financial part. And so if he has an idea, the first thing I do is start doing the research on what X, Y, Z would cost us. And yeah. then I would tell him this is what it would have cost. I don't know that we could go that route, but perhaps we can go this route where we can save some money. And you know what I'm saying? CFO still execute. Shit. Still CFO execute. Right. Exactly. <laughs> still execute your idea and what you want to do. But we're going to have to maybe go this route, you know, or sometimes I'll say not right now, you know. So why didn't someone tell him not right now? Well, you got to think. <laughs> when was this? Probably like 15 years ago or some shit. It was probably, I don't know, 2008. So your point is how could these people be so dumb with their advice? Well, why didn't anybody who if he has someone mm-hmm. who has like a lawyer or someone who manages his money because he said on there yeah. he had people managing his money. If I was managing someone's money or, you, you know, give them the red alert. Right. Alarm like, wait sooner. a minute. No, 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 no. Like no. at this rate, you're yeah. going to be broke next exactly. year versus no, you're broke. Right. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. no, bro. Like this. But God is a bad idea. A lot like, of athletes retire broke. Yeah. You know, I just I guess because. I don't know. I'm I'm afraid of stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I'm afraid of like yeah, we, don't, we don't. I don't do that. I don't. We don't. No. You, you ever know? heard Dave Ramsey's story though? When he went bankrupt. I didn't hear his bankrupt, but I follow him and yeah. I obviously listen to his podcast. It's interesting. But he had a so in the early '80s, he he completely like lost everything. He had you know multi million dollar you know real estate ventures and blah blah blah. Lost it all. Dave Ramsey, the guy that's like the finance guy. Mm. And uh, yeah, if you're a, and I know we talk about him all the time and I've been a big fan since I was younger, younger, but uh, he went through a fucking thing where he just bad decisions, bad mm. decisions, market turned, didn't know how to pivot, lost it all. But because he's fucking smart, he did it again. He mm. regained his, his wealth. Mm. Yeah, I, that's interesting how he didn't have anyone on his on his side, like giving them that look, bro. <laughs> cool. You made all this money. How about we don't put it? In a car, in a like car. in a freaking car. Well, th- it's about checks and balances because some people's uh, financial um, advisors like literally put them on a budget. This mm. is our professional opinion, you know, based on what your projections on what you're making or whatever. Um, your bills, they'll pay your bills mm-hmm. and they'll they'll say like this is the amount um, I met with. Uh, I wasn't finna hire him because I was in those position to even have one at the time but it was in new york and these people um they represent a lot of athletes and they gave me some cool information because they were saying like for example if somebody uh they gave an example of an athlete who was at the gucci store Mm -hmm. right and he was with just some chick It, it wasn't even like a real deal relationship or anything and he's calling the financial advisor like hey man can you throw another uh you know five thousand in there you know, because I, as an advance, just take it out of next month. And then he's like, well, what's going on, man? Is there some kind of emergency? What's happening? Are, do you need a tow truck? What, what's this last minute? Is there some 5, big purchase? Yeah. Is there some big purchase we need to discuss? Oh, man, you know, I'm just over here at the Gucci store. You know, uh, oh, okay, you buying something for your wife or your lady? Uh, oh, man, it's just, you know, a little something, something, you know, a little play thing, you know, ha, ha. And, uh, and he's just like, okay, basically, we, we can't be giving you advances mm-hmm. like basically long story short it's like the banks were closed this is something that we're having to wait till monday and it was an example of how like i think um eve the rapper or mm-hmm. something i think they represent i don't know who basically if somebody wanted to go buy uh, some expensive jewelry or something they would even have it on paper it says uh, the the ring f- at tiffany for x amount of dollars for the record, we didn't really uh, think it was a good idea. Long oh. story short, ah. and it's signed and dated, and it's filed, so that when Eve goes bankrupt, she can't say, "Oh, uh, 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 Martinez, right. Martinez mm. Herrera, uh, um, uh, mis- ma- yeah, yeah. Mis- han- mishandled my shit." They're right. like, "No, here is a ring she bought. Here's a necklace. Here's a car. Here's a house for her uh, mother-in-law. Here's this. Here's- and these are things that we told her." This was not part of the plan. Mm-hmm. The plan was you're on this kind of budget and we put X amount into the stock market. And this is your Roth IRA. These are your retirement stocks and bonds. And mm-hmm. this is how your portfolio is. This is real estate. This is how your shit's diversified. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I don't ever know. Like, uh, 
usually like I don't really know how the indus- people in the industry do it but I guess like we were I was talking to you about this other time I was like oh I wouldn't like for Car- the Kardashians for example like is three thousand dollars to them like three hundred dollars when you're that rich oh you start to look at it oh. man like, that's like three pennies that's it's like thirty dollars yeah. yeah like don't you ever wonder that like because they you just say three thousand yeah like a three i say thousand. three thousand of them is like three fucking pennies really yeah damn near i mean it's it, i'm not saying it depends on how you look at it if you look at it from well technically chingo three pennies times like uh uh what is that times like ten thousand or something because of the, the mm-hmm. digits Time that's ten thousand times more money to get to three thousand. So you're saying that they make ten thousand more times money than the average person. For sure. Well, it's <laughs> like yeah. Th- yeah, there's always been that old adage of Bill Gates. Like if Bill Gates dropped a uh, hundred dollars, it would cost him more to turn around and pick up that hundred dollars and keep it keep going. Keep you know? moving, Bill. Mm-hmm. And the Bill, stop, stop, Bill, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> the Walt family, you see that one where they they get rich like four million dollars richer every hour. It goes back to the haves and the have nots. For sure. The Walton family. I mean, it sound, it, people are gonna be like Chingo sounds socialist, but take that in but, four million every hour, and compare it to the treatment of the people who make the stuff, the treatment of the people who maybe work there. Like, can they afford to have decent insurance? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe they do give. I don't know. I know a lot of people have done pretty well retiring from. Walmart. Oh, Walmart apparently is a pretty damn good company to work. Yeah, for, there's yeah. a lot of you know, there's all kinds of people who have raised a family and done good shit. Uh, I'm not knocking Walmart, uh, people who work at Walmart. Sure. What I'm saying is when you compare the amount of money that either a CEO makes, which a lot of times they earn it, right? Sure, they're bad motherfuckers. Sure. But the Walton family, which technically their granddaddy had a good idea, and mm. it's still technically theirs. So it sounds socialist for me to be like, hey, maybe y'all shouldn't make so much and be so have, 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 mm-hmm. and maybe those crumbs off of your plate aren't going to hurt you. You're not even eating those crumbs. Mm-hmm. How could these, these people could get a fat ass raise if you just knocked a couple fucking crumbs off of your I sound like Tupac. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's always the argument. My baby though. over here looking like Barbie Pac. Barbie Pac. Okay. <laughs> Time to make that photo. You got me crunk. <laughs> Squat life. Those are two of the characters I would totally want to be. That's your brand. Those are your Barbie two main ingredients. And, like seriously, those are the two like Barbie is Barbie. She's I can classic. See it now. She's I really can you know, and then Pac is just that's the thug in me. Right, totally good. Good combo. Oh, boo. um, uh, off off record on record. <laughs> Put a pin in this idea. Sure. Besides the DC thing, um, uh, okay. We finna pull a Kylie with Mighty Sword. All right, we'll talk about that after. Uh, oh, I say that shit to her all the time. I sent her something this morning. Uh, well, as far as well, that. in terms of Kylie, got an ill blueprint. But let me tell you something. Do I not always? How I know people that have listened to and like. Like no joke. Only seven employees, bro. I sent you. I was upset the other day. I always say keep your operations. No small. warehouse space. Where's all this makeup? Shopify. I, I sent consumer. you guys. I sent you guys the video it's on online. YouTube about this. <laughs> Y'all are both so. Listen, drunk. it's so funny because I sent he. I w- we were listening to How I Was Built, right? My baby, go, my baby, not doing makeup. She doing bandanas. <laughs> <laughs> and go he ahead. goes, I said. He goes, what? I said, Pete, I sent you this I, whole video. Yeah, and I, and I, and I did like, it. You no, did. babe, I sent it to you. But I said, you see how you don't pay attention? No, I do. But listen, communication, you sometimes need to learn how to sell your ideas. Baby. <laughs> no, I do. Because this is why. Yeah. I saw it the first time. What did I, what did I take in? Kylie is a, is a smart business person who made a shit ton of money in a different way. Even though people don't give her credit. She fucking p- pulled it off quicker than Kim could. You must have not watched it all the way through because then it talked about like how she only has seven employees. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but she I, outsources. I, the second time I heard it audio wise on motherfucking NPR, how I built this, mm-hmm. what's his name was talking about it. Guy. And maybe I was a little high. Uh, what's his name? Guy Raz was mm-hmm. talking about. Maybe I had just hit the weed. And then I hear the story a second time from a different perspective. Now I literally saw the blueprint. This time I was focused on the blueprint and I was focused on the blank. The blank is makeup. Swap it out. I could have did that with supplements, but it was just a different time. And And, and there are certain things in those industries that are like, we were talking about framework the other day. It's all about the the blueprint slash framework, however you want to phrase it. Like Mm -hmm. that is what it is. You can always just replace. Yeah. And people like, I know that I talk about them a lot. Right. But I swear to you, like. They're 
all all three of them going from Chloe Talented. to Kim and Kylie. I hey, don't care what, what about talent. What about Kendall? All of them. Don't leave Kendall out. Well, Kendall's just a model. Hey. So yeah, her it's mom, a different or she's a little bit different. Uh, different, like her mom. She's not really like trying. Although her and Kylie do have like a PacSun uh, brand oh, cool. uh, that that they do have, and uh, they did like she also did Adidas. Only uh, one shoes. slipping is Rob. But anyway, <laughs> well, Rob has a sock line, but he doesn't sure. try to still rocking the sock line. He's doing the sock line, but he has someone else that runs he needs it. To get his so mind someone right. else runs that, you know. Uh, first and foremost, but <laughs> <laughs> but Mental you know, health. to go back to them, I I know I talk about them a you lot. Need some it's like, but <laughs> I do like feel like. Okay, I get it. They're not like actresses or whatever, whatever you want to call it. They're talented at branding. Man, mm. they're they're fucking geniuses. Mm. Just follow them. You can't don't be pay dumb. attention about their bimbos their, and they got plastic yeah, surgery. Yeah, don't pay attention to that. Sure, I'm sure they talk annoying and they don't mm. seem very bright. And we know they only there because the sex tape. But the talent came in. It's like, okay, now that we here post sex tape, mm-hmm. now that we have a show, how do we stay number one? The mom one? also how came in yeah. and, and was fucking genius. It's like, how do we stay number one ratings wise and endorsements like, and cool Kim? We know you you was out there giving head. You know, doming people. Doming mm-hmm. people. Let's just fucking run you know, with it. They were Let's like, should just we make call shit it happen. Astrodome? Are we, what are we calling this tape? Let's just make it happen. <laughs> and that's the genius part of it. Like, she turned something bad into good, and here they are, I mean, billionaires. I mean, that's the nasty part, but but my argument <laughs> is this. That's the nasty part that I watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My argument is that, well, was she just boring? And what it really doing? was, yeah. <sighs> Man, you getting on my nerves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Undersized. It's the, uh, what was I talking about? What was the point you were making? Uh, basically, talent. Like, for the record, they talent. Mm. Because, you know, th- all these campaigns are pretty flawlessly effective. You know, like, it's, I don't know if Kylie came up with that framework on her own or she had some advice or they said let's try it this way first and if it don't work then we'll go do makeup collabs the traditional way like the way uh diddy's cologne is just like a little collab with uh estee lancome whoever mm-hmm. there's these big conglomerates right. and they just cut j-lo her check for her fucking perfume they cut everybody checks sean john we're gonna make it you just approve the fucking scent right uh but kylie's approach was i found a factory in oxnard they finna make all my shit I just turn in the artwork. That's probably one of her seven employees. Uh, we don't even pay for warehousing. It just comes out of the Shopify fee because they're storing it and handling all the um, the shipping. shipping. So really, she's more of like a little media company. She's more of like the the. Um, and she's never used she's a the PR marketing. company ever. She, why, would she? why would she? PR why would she? Why would she hire social media? Why yeah. would she spend any money on public relations? I am so check this out. So. I'm really hard on a lot of the comics, right? Yeah. Because I feel like the comics we roll with are all talented. Super. Mm-hmm. Like, Super. not cocky or anything, but we don't fucks with you if you're not. You know what For I'm saying? Sure. Like, you're not part of my, my husband's my brand. Inner circle. Yeah, because the, at the end of the day, you're still a reflection of what right. my husband represents. And, and because the fans are number one. Yeah, and the we fans are number one. I don't want a fan get, to ever leave yeah, and be like, people get oh, babysitters. Chingo's opener sucked. Mm-hmm. You or know? like, this yeah. was our one, one night out, mm-hmm. and these motherfuckers sucked. Anyway, that's something that's in, in, that we take in consideration every time. So it has Hard nothing to do as nothing to do with like, oh, Chingo thinks he's, he's you a know, hater. He, better, he don't, he don't let want me get on. has Man, nothing better, to do with that. It has better come all, with it's it. all about the fans mm-hmm. and it's all about quality. the fan experience. And we want quality. So maybe that's number should, one. Yeah, maybe you should tighten up your set. <laughs> yeah, that's number one. So and number two is. Uh, what were we talking about? I just lost the train of thought. PR. I, oh, PR. So she's never done it. So anyway, back to the comics. These com- our comics don't have very many followers, and I and my thing to them is like, how do you want anyone to ever know who you are if you're not posting anything mm-hmm. about anything funny, nothing about your day, none of that. So check it out. So, uh, poor Luis. I, know, I was going to call I him know, out. I know he's going to be listening. No, I checked him again. Checked him. Damn. Yesterday at, <laughs> Damn, <Addison>. Tupac. <laughs> I checked him again. She said, you know, I went at him kind of like, uh, not poetic justice, Pac. I was more like, um, you know, juice, <laughs> Pac, yeah. in the elevator. It was just them two in the elevator. What's up, Luis? So, I just wanted to, like, it's funny because I'm like, poor guy. He's probably like, bitch, did nobody ask your opinion, you know? But what I was getting at is that. Him and Midnight are both very talented, and they're both very funny, right? Right. So 
I was watching things that were being reposted, right, on their, under the, the hashtag Latino as fuck tour. Mm-hmm. And then Midnight was reposting all the people that were tagging him. So I sent a screenshot and I said, I know that you have a show tonight. I said, I'm not trying to stress you out. I said, but I said, I'm going to stress you out. Put your stress shoes on. Because this is your <laughs> opportunity. You know, I tell everyone this, right? Yeah. This is an opportunity for you to gain a new fan. You are given this platform where right. Chingo has loyal fans. Because let me tell you something. That hashtag that I created, Chingo Blings fans are the best it's legit oh, like yeah. i people can't drove in, people drove in and i hear it all the time like i came all the way from blah 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 because he's not coming to my city or blah 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 so for me that hashtag is legit and yeah. i use it every time so with that being said that means that I- any friend that's of chingos is probably going to be a fan of these guys well, right sure. so hello mm-hmm. think put your thinking hat on so i told him i said do you see that everybody that's been you were on the same show as Midnight, but everybody is tagging who? Yeah. Midnight and uh, Chingo, Chingo only. Mm-hmm. I said, do you see where we have a problem? And I said, okay, tonight I want you to shake hands with the fans that come up to you. Tell them thank you for coming out and tell them to follow you on social media. As a matter of fact, when they buy a shirt, give them your sticker for free. Don't sell it. Mm-hmm. I said, because your social media is on your sticker. Give them away. Eat up that cost. Gain a fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fan in the long run is more. Is, it's, is priceless. It's oh, priceless. Yeah. Exactly. So I told him that, right? So kid you not. Shaking and hands. just that, that by the end of that night, his following went up. I said, I'm going to give you until August 31st to get to 1,000 followers. He's already at like 900 and something. I said, look at that. You're not, we're not even at August 31st. No, I give him September 31st. I'm sorry, because mm-hmm. we're already in August. I give him September. Like, two weeks. No, no, no. I give him September 31st. And I said, and look at this. We're not even at the end of August. And you've built all these fans in just one weekend that I kept telling you. He's like, sometimes, I don't know, like for him, because he's, you know, mm-hmm. most comics are pretty shy. That's, that's what I say about him when people ask me like. But, but we're in the people business. Yeah. And I still have that salesman in me to where I'm from the flea market. Mm-hmm. So I have no problem shaking every, you know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. I, I, like the, the speech she gave him, like I was already up on game. <laughs> when you walked in, remember we were having a conversation in uh, San Angelo when we were talking before the show and we were talking about content and social media. And then you're like, we got to go because the show's going to, you know, remember? You, we you walked in on the hotel room. Yeah, in the hotel room. You, whenever I was getting ready, you were like, oh, I'm going to go yeah. uh, hang out with the guys real quick while you get ready. Okay. And, and the hangout was just us talking about that <laughs> they walked into. Yeah, because you even said like, oh, I say, I, you're like, I walked in on them talking about social media. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I, poor guy, poor, poor uh, Luis. I, but he was like, no, he's like, I was like, I know. I was like, it's none of my business. I said, but I want to see you succeed. Yeah. I said, which is the only reason why i give you guys same thing with jerry same thing with midnight i tell them all javi too i'm big on javi because they'll be at the merch booth i'll be like javi you want to tell them um uh, where they can find you oh yeah you can find me at midnight do you want to tell them <coughs> well, where you can follow what happens i'll just use Luis for an example sometimes comedians get caught up and not even just comedians just artists or business people in general you could put a uh, baker in the in the mix plumber electrician mm-hmm. mechanic whatever it is sometimes uh fill in the blank get too comfortable on like oh i just focus on the funny and everything else which is yeah, yeah i'm sure there's be, a lot yeah. of merit i'm sure there's 80 percent you're right yeah. um so therefore i shouldn't have to be like pushy on people mm-hmm. i shouldn't have to deal with some people are drunk and they real aggressive and they're like hey man ah, and they trying to still want me to entertain and that doesn't make me comfortable okay cool pull that aside because we're in the people business mm-hmm. and this is where you're gonna have to put your salesman hat and shoot the shit some more and take more pictures and not take a break and riff and make this person laugh yeah. and say hello and now you're hugging these three tias and this lady and yeah it's not like you're forgetting that the aspect that you're a purist because a lot of a lot of artists are very they're purists you know it's for the art mm-hmm. but also hey you gotta eat you know yeah because like uh, one example i use is uh somebody can have like a cupcake spot and be like hey I'm, i went to school for this shit i, I care about cupcakes you i know everything example. i know everything there is about cupcakes you know how you know how long we marinate this fl- cool awesome but 
you're telling me that your bakery doesn't have to do like uh, YouTube or Twitter or to take stories, pic- stories. Yeah. Instagram, or you're not you're you're not gonna cater to people wanting to come in and Instagram some shit. Guess what? Uh, your clock has started ticking, and you' about to go out of business. He blew Midnight's mind because he used that same. I analogy. said, "Cause you might." I said, "God forbid, in the same strip mall, someone else paid rent, signed the same lease as you, and um, sure, they might not have gone to the same culinary school, but they might know how to use a fucking iPhone and a Wi-Fi connection and hustle. Meaning, like, hey man, don't forget." Uh, this the flavor of the day Mm -hmm. ma'am how are you enjoying your thing don't forget we also shoot a fucking mini series from here or or don't forget we got this instagrammable thing Mm -hmm. and it's like you're gonna be so mad at them because be like it's not fair they got this long line and you know it's looking like turkey leg hut over there now you're just a hater because Mm -hmm. you just were too cocky thinking you just had the wrong idea that it's all about only this Mm -hmm. like nah this is the year 2019 yeah it is all about social media. What does your social media look and, like? And, That's and things like podcasting, mm-hmm. you know, and th- like I hear a lot of uh, other podcasters say, like, I'm not really tripping over acting right now or I'm cool off of acting because it's super inefficient. takes up all this time. You're always waiting. They don't always pay you well. And, you know, you can get the same satisfaction, reach more people. Like when I was in uh, Philly Brown, I dropped the Canelo skit like right after maybe because my role wasn't that impactful in Philly Brown, but I was getting a shit ton of feedback from a Facebook sketch Mm -hmm. and YouTube, like people calling. It's like, dude, they, man, look, look, they sharing it over here at my job. Everyone at my work, everybody in this town in Mexico is talking about versus, you know, you in a big production. And yeah, Mm -hmm. some things just don't move the needle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta be disrupted. Yeah. Cool. Barbie pie. (laughs) No, I'm saying. Uh, We've learned a lot today, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially about Barbie Pot. Barbie Pot. Barb <laughs> Pot. Well, thank Bar-pock. you guys. We should we should yep. wrap it up here. Uh, I gotta pick up the fifth grader in a minute. Uh, thank sixth you. Sixth grader, babe. I'm sorry, sixth grade now. Damn, sixth grade. Yeah, sixth yeah, grade already. I know she just started sixth grade. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and uh, hope to see you on the road. We, you know, like I said, we have Portland coming up, DC, uh, Monterrey, Saltillo, Mexico, and so much more. Uh, Albuquerque, San Antonio. Hit the website. Chingobling.com. We Chingobling.com so we can meet up, have some laughs, have some drinks. And again, thanks to all the people that came out, Houston and Addison. Remember, Thank 10% you guys. off the merch store for podcast listeners. For we, sure. We don't blast that out anywhere else. It's just for the podcast we mentioned listeners. mentioned it here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's what? WDHS. And boom. 10% off. There boom. you go, guys. And we got some and new, we'll sh- be new stuff coming. Real soon. Stay tuned. Sus. <laughs> <laughs>